in the name of Christ, welcome. From every orientation, location, color, and class, young and old, female and male, Gentile and Jew, in the name of Christ, welcome. Give thanks that Jesus the Jew became a servant to his people to confirm the ancient promise that the Gentiles would glorify God. We are the fruits of Christ's labor gathered by God's grace. Therefore, let us welcome one another just as Christ has welcomed us for the glory of God. In the name of Christ, welcome. I invite you to rise and welcome those who have slid into Lakeview this morning. <laughs> Sunday school kids to be here um, to make it through that. 
Um, you can still uh, get registered some ornaments. Um, you can buy ornaments for a tree. We're supporting the Salvation Army Shelter with those ornaments and our own kitchen fund. Um, Christmas Eve worship, nope, it's 4.30 and 6. And also note that there is no worship on Sunday, Christmas Day, December 25th. Middle school kids, 6th grade through ninth grade, should start getting their middle school retreat forms in. There's forms available um, out on the entryway table. They've also been emailed to your homes. Um, I think that's all you got anything else you want to say. I had to pick Lynn up this morning because I was afraid she wouldn't get here in the meantime, and uh, it all worked out nicer. With that, I'll be quiet, and I'll invite Dane forward. <laughs>
Ooh, they had a music program. <laughs> it is time to decorate the Christmas tree, so I would invite kids, and if your parents want to come along, uh, we need to hang some ornaments. So come on up, we got quite a few to do this morning. I'll read the names as you hang them on the tree. Charles Kiso, Roberta Kiso, and Thomas Kiso. Inga Sant. Sometimes I don't pronounce these names. Claire Olson. Go right to the end of the line right here. John Olson. Go hang it right up there. Don Clayton. Cassandra Olson. Helmut Sant. Janelle Laura Covington. June and Leroy Benson. Miles Tyler Covington. Andrew Case. Joseph Allen Case. Marcy Krebs, Sam and Margaret Silver. Our grandchildren. Ted and Esther Krieger. Anonymous. Anthony. Paul. Anonymous. Roy and Ray and Ursula Silver. Our parents. An artist, an artist and Harold Robach. Billy Wood. Doesn't she do a good job? As the kids come up to the steps, I invite the congregation to turn to page two. Worship book. Jesus is the light of the world. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When we enter this sanctuary, may this tree remind us of Jesus Christ, who gives life to the world, and who made his executioner's cross into a tree of life. We give thanks for all those loved ones named on these ornaments, and the light that they have known.
Oh, and they're playing bells on Christmas Eve, too. All right, that's even more exciting. I'm going to invite our readers who are here to come forward and join you. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the, the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with te terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall weep like deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, will go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall be returned, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Thank you. 
were being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You, mu you also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who have spoken the name of the Lord. Please rise for the hymn. Who have been 
him kicked out of the community. You know, those unclean people like lepers and people who have demons. And you were born in a cow stall. Your parents weren't even married. Stinking shepherds came to your birth. What kind of a Messiah could you be? You do not suggest kingship. And then Jesus wonders what John was actually expecting of him. What did he think I looked like, Jesus said. What, do you, what did he think would mark my existence? Did he think I'd be dressed up in silk robes or living in an opulent palace? Did he think that I'd only spend time with the religious elite or the wealthy or those who have power and prestige in Palestine? Is that what John was thinking he'd find? <coughs> As we again approach Christmas this year, only a couple weeks away, it's good for us to once again think about and consider how we have sanitized that nativity book. It's good for us today to consider how we've turned that manger birth into a warm and cozy Christmas Eve story. With our candlelight and our wonderful carols and our twinkling Christmas tree, again this year, we will depict the Messiah's birth in a cow stall as something romantic. Is that how the people in the first century understood it? How did Jesus have to try to convince others that he was the Messiah, the one sent from God? A baby born to unmarried parents in a cow barn was not at all what they were expecting. So also during this Advent season, as we look forward to the return of this Christ, what do you expect? What do you think this Christ will look like? Are you looking for a white man with bleached and flowing robes floating along in a cloud? Are you looking for a man with a scepter and a crown who's out there sitting on a throne? Are you expecting a well-groomed and highly manicured person wearing an Armani suit and a power tie? Are you expecting your Messiah to be American-born and white? How will we see Christ? What if, what if Jesus comes as the father that we just sent back to Mexico because he was in the United States illegal? What if Jesus comes in the woman who recently got put in jail because she was illegally sleeping on the steps of the city county building here in Madison? What if Jesus comes as one of those panhandlers we're kind of sick of on East Washington and Stoughton Road? What if Jesus comes as a Syrian or an Afghan? What if Jesus comes as a Muslim? We talk about the return of Christ. We talk about preparing for that return. We talk about the excitement of eternity that is connected to that return. But remember this. In the first century, the first time around, Jesus showed up in the least likely possible spot. He was a baby in a cow stall. And then he announced to John over there in prison a few years later that people would know it was him, not because of the way he looked, but because the blind received their sight, the lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf people could hear, the dead were raised, and the poor got good news brought to them. Are you the Messiah? Because that's not at all what I was expecting. Amen. Choir, please come forward.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, open our eyes to see Jesus. Make us mindful that he may not look the way we expected. Guide our words and actions so that we may show others what Christ looks like. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we give thanks for the musicians and youth who have worked to lead worship this weekend. We pray that hearts will be touched because of their time and energy. And we pray that our worship will always be to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, move us to give assistance to all who struggle with poverty, housing, and inadequate food. We pray that those who will face cold temperatures on the streets this week may find warming and shelter. We give thanks for all who are decorating our Christmas tree and supporting the Salvation Army Shelter Program, and for those who have donated to the Lakeview Food Pantry this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, continue to be present in Gatlinburg and throughout Tennessee. Be there with the youth who have been detained and charged for starting that fire. Be with all who are providing disaster relief. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, come with comfort to all who grieve. Bring courage to those affected by the Oakland Warehouse Fire. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, bring health and healing to all people, including Donna, Blanche, and all those who we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as the ushers receive the morning call.
Please rise. A reading from Psalm 146. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Friends, go in peace. Be steadfast in faith. Live in harmony with one another. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead, John. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. Upstairs and help bring the grace down. Bring the light of Christ to the world. 